I unexpectedly encountered my classmate Lily at my company's anniversary party. But Lily just mocked me for being a factory worker. Don't come near us if you see us, okay? My husband is a Harvard-educated director, way above someone lowly and incompetent like you. Her words seemingly enjoying the harassment brought back painful memories of middle school. Back then, Lily used to bully me for being poor. Finally, I felt as if the last straw of my patience had snapped inside me. Well, your husband will be unemployed from tomorrow, I said. Lily was shocked by my unexpected words but soon laughed it off as a joke. However, she and her husband would soon understand the true meaning of my words. My name is Dylan Yum. I'm turning 42 this year. I met my wife Alice at work, and we got married. It's our 15th wedding anniversary this year, and I've never really had a serious argument with the kind and family-oriented Alice. I'm always grateful to Alice, who always supports me, and we live a peaceful life together. One day, my company decided to hold an anniversary party. It's the 50th anniversary this year, so it was going to be a big event, and I was looking forward to it. On the day of the anniversary, I wore a suit and tie picked out by Alice and got ready to leave. Alice had her hair done beautifully in the morning and was wearing a light-colored dress. How do I look, Dylan? She asked. You look incredibly beautiful, I replied. Her elegant beauty was mesmerizing, perhaps partly due to my bias. With Alice by my side, I headed to the venue. The venue we rented was quite large, and as we got closer, we saw more people heading to the same place. It's typical for a big corporation's anniversary party to have so many invitees. Yeah, there must be hundreds of people invited, I remarked. While exchanging words with Alice, we entered the venue and waited for the event to start. Inside, many people had already gathered, exchanging greetings and introducing themselves. Company events are, in a way, a chance for self-promotion, so the more capable employees are eager to network. While I was greeting attendees, I was suddenly approached. Is that you, Dylan? It was Lily, my classmate from middle school. She was eyeing me with a look that seemed to mock me. Lily, the beauty and center of attention in our class since childhood, still maintained her beauty even after about thirty years since middle school. But now, her beauty faded as she glared at me with her eyes narrowed. It's been a while, hasn't it, Dylan? What are you doing now? Everyone's worried about you since you never show up to reunions. Lily spoke to me with a mocking tone. To be frank, back in middle school, I wasn't exactly a standout in my class. Lily, seemingly oblivious to this, kept talking with a hypocritical cheerful laugh. Even though I hadn't asked, she continued, I got married five years ago. My husband is an elite employee who was in charge of an overseas branch until recently and today he's even getting recognized as an outstanding employee. That's great, congratulations. I was surprised that Lily's husband worked at this company. I still offered my congratulations. Then, Lily, for some reason displeased, frowned. There's no need for you to congratulate me. What kind of job do you have, being here? Are you associated with the company? I am. Before I could explain... Lily waved her hand dismissively as if bored with the conversation. Never mind, it's not important. You probably work in some subcontractor's factory, being a middle school graduate and all. I do go to the factory, indeed. I started to speak again, but by that time, Lily had already turned her back on me. She had lost interest. A factory worker like you shouldn't even be here. Just stay quiet in the corner and don't embarrass yourself. Lily said as she walked away towards a man who must be her husband, Albert. While I thought it was petty, I made sure to remember his name. Lily mocked me for being a middle school graduate, but to be precise, that's not entirely true. When I was in middle school, my mom got seriously ill, and my dad lost his job due to the recession. From that day, my life changed completely. My dad, once a diligent employee, started drinking and gambling to escape from the harsh reality. Soon, we ran out of money and had to sell our house, moving into a small, old one-bedroom apartment. As a middle schooler, I grew taller but couldn't afford new uniforms or sportswear, so I had to make do with hand-me-downs from relatives. 
This made me a target for ridicule by my classmates. I was called poor and uncool. Lily, beautiful and bossy, was the ringleader, even instructing the entire class not to talk to me. She was the popular girl in class, and no one dared to go against her, so her bullying continued until we graduated. On graduation day, Lily called me over and asked with a sneer, Which high school are you going to? It would be good if you could get a hand-me-down uniform. I was so annoyed by her persistent teasing that I retorted, I won't need a uniform for the high school I'm going to. Not going to high school, just working after middle school. Yeah, that's right, I'm going to work after graduating middle school. Hearing my response, Lily burst into laughter. Can't believe you don't even have the money to go to high school. Well, do your best to earn your place, she said. As a middle school graduate, I left without replying to her. What I told Lily wasn't entirely true, but it wasn't completely false either. I attended a night high school while working during the day. My dad was still drowning in alcohol, and my mom, who was doing peace work, kept going in and out of the hospital, so I had no one to rely on. After graduating middle school, I desperately looked for a job, but there were hardly any companies willing to hire a middle school graduate. The only place that hired me was the machine manufacturing factory where I work. Now, I've always loved tinkering with machines, so I threw myself into this job. I worked during the day and attended high school at night. Balancing work and study was tough, but I managed, thanks to the encouragement from my older colleagues. They taught me the ropes at work and even treated me to lunch sometimes, treating me like their own son. Years went by as I worked, supported by everyone. After finally graduating high school, I planned to continue working at the factory as an employee, but my senior colleagues advised me otherwise. Now that you've graduated high school, try to study as much as you can, they suggested. They told me about scholarship programs and direct company support for employees. I was surprised and grateful for their concern, so I went to college. I chose a university department related to my company's business and gained strength by acquiring various certifications and researching specialized fields. After graduating from college, I returned to the company, and a few years later, at 25, I encountered a turning point at work. I met Alice, who would become my wife. Alice was kind to everyone and had a lovely smile and I gradually developed a fondness for her. But it turned out that she was also interested in me. She asked me out on a date, and that's how our relationship began. A few years later, we happily got married and built a warm family together. Throughout such a life full of ups and downs, I had completely forgotten about being harassed in middle school. So when Lily approached me at the venue today, I was genuinely surprised. Seeing my distressed look, Alice looked at me worriedly. After I briefly explained the situation, she tightly grasped my hand. No matter what anyone says, I know you're a wonderful person, Dylan. Let's stay confident and enjoy the company's anniversary party. Yeah, you're right. Encouraged by her supportive words, I squeezed her hand back. Thus, we decided to wait for the party to start. After exchanging greetings with everyone, the hustle and bustle finally settled down. Thinking of resting until the start time, I moved towards the wall with Alice. Oh, you're still here? There were Lily and her husband, whom I had just parted ways with. I was a bit surprised to bump into them so unexpectedly, but I sincerely congratulated her husband, Albert. Albert, I heard you're an outstanding employee getting an award today. Congratulations. But instead of responding, Albert just looked me over as if appraising me. Is this the factory worker classmate you were talking about, Lily? He has the audacity to attend the company's anniversary party despite being a mere worker. Lily returned the words with a bitter expression. Then Albert, ignoring my presence, curiously asked Lily. But for a factory worker, he's wearing a nice suit. I'm an elite, so I'm quite particular about suits. Even if he tries hard to wear a good suit, it's ruined because he's a lowly worker. It's truly embarrassing to have someone like him as a classmate. Frowning, Lily spat out her words, and Albert inquired further, embarrassing me. Just imagine, he's been a factory worker since dropping out of middle school. That's thirty years of being a mere worker. 
Well, wow, really, that's unbelievable. Lily pointed and laughed at me, and Albert leaned back, distancing himself as if amused. They both looked down on me with obvious disdain, and then glanced at the person next to me. There stood Annie, watching the two of them intently. So, this bottom-of-the-barrel worker, even though he's a dropout, managed to get married. What does your wife do? Lily asked me, and I answered honestly. She works in the same field as me. We met at work. At that moment, Lily and Albert looked at each other and burst out laughing. A couple both sweating it out in the field, doing menial work. Perfect match for an incompetent dropout like you. They started mocking, not just me, but also my wife. I couldn't understand how they could say such awful things to my wife, a stranger to them. As I stood there stunned, Lily blurted out. But if I were you, I'd be too miserable to even mention working in a factory. Yeah, for an elite like me, it's unimaginable to live such a lowly life. Please stop talking like that. I retorted angrily to their cruel insults. But Lily looked at me as if I were something dirty and turned her back, and Albert shooed me away as if swatting a fly. If we keep talking to you, people might think I'm a local class worker like you. Could you go somewhere else? I'm talking to someone important. Lily sneered. I was boiling with anger at such rude behavior, but as a grown-up, I couldn't just let my emotions take over and start yelling. So, I tried hard to hold it in. However, Lily seemed to mock my feelings and hurled more disdainful words. From now on, if you see us, don't come close, okay? My husband is a Harvard-educated director, way different from a lowly incompetent person like you. Her words enjoying the harassment brought back painful middle school memories. Back then and even now, Lily acted arrogantly, thinking she wouldn't be retaliated against. I felt like I heard the sound of my patience snapping inside. Well, your husband will be unemployed from tomorrow. Lily was taken aback by my unexpected words, staring with wide eyes as I stared back expressionlessly. She laughed it off, pretending. My husband unemployed? What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? Why would a mere factory worker like you have any power over my husband? That's because... I'm the president of the company, I declared. For a moment, Lily was dumbfounded, then suddenly burst into loud laughter. You, the president? Don't be silly. Are you just saying that because my husband is a Harvard-educated director and you want to one-up him? It's not a lie. Yeah, keep your fantasies to yourself, just like in middle school. I continued seriously, but Lily clearly didn't believe a word. Then Albert looked back and forth between me and Annie standing by my side, and shrugged in disbelief. Married to a husband who spouts such fantasies, she must be quite a wife. Aren't you embarrassed to stand beside such a man? After spitting out those words, Albert and Lily hardly left together. As I watched their backs, I trembled with anger. The person who had harassed me so much in middle school was still treating me this way even now as an adult, and it wasn't just me they were mocking, Alice in my workplace, too. As I was about to step forward in anger to call them back, a gentle hand was placed on my shoulder. Annie, I heard everything, but it's not good to reprimand them here, she said. But I couldn't just back down, especially after they laughed at Annie. But as I looked at her, I was taken aback by her unexpected expression. She wore a mischievous smile. I have a good idea. Hearing Annie's plan, I nodded deeply, feeling a sense of relief. When the announcement for the party start was made, we moved to our assigned seats. The event began on time, and the employees started singing the company anthem. In my peripheral vision, I saw Lily and Albert singing along as well. After checking with the organizers, it turned out that Albert was indeed being recognized as an outstanding employee and, along with several other distinguished employees, was escorted to a special seat with his family. Imagining what was about to happen, I suppressed a rising chuckle. After the anthem, the entertainment part started. There were performances by a magician and comedians, summarizing the company's history in a skit, filling the room with a festive atmosphere. As the entertainment ended, the host led the applause and continued with the ceremony. Next, we'll have a speech from the president and CEO, Mr. Young. Upon those words, I began to walk slowly. 
As I stood on the stage, I looked over the gathered crowd, expressing my gratitude while everyone listened intently. Only two people were the exception. Lily and Albert were staring at me, mouths agape in shock. Even from the stage, I could see their mouths moving, muttering, Why? Why is he speaking? It can't be true. He's the president? I haven't heard anything about this. I continued speaking normally. Usually, we would now proceed to the ceremony for awarding outstanding employees. However, before that, I have an announcement to make. One of the awardees, the director who was assigned to our overseas branch, Albert, will be dismissed from his position effective today. The room was enveloped in silence in an instant. As I tried to continue with a smile, the host approached me. Um, what is your reasoning for this? The host asked me, appearing confused. It was then that Lily suddenly stood up and shouted. That's a lie, everyone. This man was just a classmate from my middle school. He's just a mere factory worker. Why is he standing there? Yeah, this must be some kind of prank. But this taste in entertainment is terrible, right everyone? With her shrill voice, Lily spat out these words, and next to her, Albert grinned smugly, looking back and forth between me and Lily, bursting into a brazen laugh. The guests in the room started murmuring, enveloped in a tense atmosphere. I continued speaking calmly. Lily just mentioned earlier that working in a factory is a lowly job. She also told me not to talk to her anymore, fearing that the leanness would rub off on her. So what? Lily glared back at me, hands on her hips, still refusing to admit any wrongdoing. I work for this company. I cannot continue working with someone who is ashamed of our work. But my husband is an elite director, completely different from you in the charade. Now, at that moment, the executive director, Roman, rushed to the awardee's seat, his face flushed with anger, and started yelling at Albert. Hey, apologize to Mr. Young right now. However, Lily and Albert, still half-smiling, refused to believe Roman's words. What's wrong, Roman? Why should we apologize to some factory worker? He's just a lowly incompetent worker. He's just trying to scare us by lying about firing my husband. But Roman shouted back, his voice trembling. State the name of our company, Young High Tech Corporation. But Young. Muttering this, Albert suddenly realized, and his face turned pale. His name, Dylan Young, could it be? He's really our company's president. At Albert's words, Lily froze in shock. During this time, I had been watching them and judging that they finally understood, I spoke again. It seems you finally believe me, Albert. His face ashen, shaking all over, hardly able to stand from his chair. In fact, Alice is the daughter of a major manufacturer that produces some of the leading semiconductor devices in the country. The company that accepted me, a middle school grad, was one of her parents' factories. At that time, it was still a mid-sized company taking on various machinery productions. But 30 years ago, it developed its first proprietary product, a micrometer, and has since expanded its business with the advancement of electronic device technology. Now, alongside semiconductor manufacturing, we're collaborating with foreign companies to develop even more precise testing systems. Combining the knowledge I gained in college with a practical perspective, I actively participated in product development after graduating, resulting in several hit products. Thanks to this, I was transferred to the headquarters, promoted to Director of Electronic Hardware Development, and that's where I met Alice. Even after our marriage, her family never spoke of my past attending a night high school. Instead, they warmly accepted me as a diligent and enthusiastic young man, rare in this era, wanting to repay this family and the company that raised me. I devoted myself to my work without distraction. Then, two years ago, when En's father retired, I took over as the president, understanding the truth. Albert looked like he was about to collapse, and Roman addressed him even more desperately. You were overseas, so you might not have known directly, but at least check the information about the company you work for. That is Albert. His face still pale, tried to stammer an excuse, but Roman, his face red with anger, kept yelling. You're so caught up in being an elite from Harvard University that you don't even know the face of our president. 
I'm ashamed that I recommended someone like you as an outstanding employee. Roman then grabbed Albert by the scruff of his neck and dragged him in front of me. He forcefully bowed Albert's head and then joined him in kneeling down. I deeply apologize for the disrespectful behavior of my subordinate. Please forgive us. I'm so sorry for my ignorance. It's inexcusable. Albert finally knelt down of his own accord, his face turning bright red as sweat tripped onto the floor. Anyone who had been watching this unfold turned to me with a question. Jess, this was a plan Alice had come up with. Dylan, what will you do now? You've revealed the truth in front of everyone. To avoid being accused of unilaterally firing an employee, yeah, well, he's fired. Someone who insults a person they've just met like that definitely doesn't fit in with our company. As I said this, Albert fell silent, his forehead dripping with sweat. Roman quickly spoke up. I apologize for my wrong judgment causing such inconvenience. I'll refrain from suing for defamation. Since he has apologized, let's fire him and put an end to this commotion. Hearing my words, Roman seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, thinking the situation was resolved. But the next voice came from Lily, who had been dumbfoundedly watching everything, her face flushed with anger. She lashed out at me. I don't care if you're the president or whatever. Why do you get to act so high and mighty? Furious and almost panting, Lily was met with my calm response. Before you criticize others, maybe you should worry about your own life. With your husband fired, you'll lose your income and won't be able to live luxuriously anymore. Lily, upon hearing my words, finally seemed to grasp her situation, standing frozen, her lips quivering. Alice, glancing at her, whispered to me, Dylan, let's have those people leave now. Yeah, you're right. It's a special anniversary party after all. We need to make sure everyone who came enjoys it. I instructed the staff to escort Albert, who was still kneeling, and Lily, pale-faced and rigid, out of the venue. After they left, we refreshed the atmosphere of the venue and successfully concluded the party. Albert later repeatedly tried to apologize, but I dismissed them. Having an employee who looks down on others just because of Lily's words could eventually lead to issues at work. Albert, who had been fired, suffered greatly since he had already purchased a luxurious home and car on loan, relying on his salary. Certainly. Here's the rewritten version with added punctuation. Lily, who always loved a lavish lifestyle and apparently never saved much, found their finances in dire straits. Within months, unable to pay the enormous loans, the couple eventually had to sell their house and car and move to a shabby apartment. Albert struggled to find a new job, losing both money and status, leading to endless quarrels in their now impoverished household. Eventually, they divorced and now live separately. Albert, desperate for a job, finally found work as a factory worker. He spends his days standing in front of a conveyor belt, endlessly assembling machines as part of a repetitive process. Meanwhile, Lily became a topic of discussion among her local classmates for her actions towards me. Abandoned even by her family, she now lives alone, struggling to afford meals. Her once prized beauty faded away. She's barely making ends meet by working night jobs. As for Alice and me, we continue to live happily. Our focus on developing excellent employees led to stable and growing company performance. Just as the company helped me, I now aim to fulfill the hopes of the younger generation. We've enhanced our educational programs and training systems for our employees, which has already led to the creation of an innovative new product. This product is expected to be a significant step forward for our company. But it's not just a new product that was born. Alice and I also welcomed a beautiful daughter. Our family is overjoyed and adores her. I'm so glad I met you. I'm truly happy. Me too. When I graduated from middle school, I thought my life was over. But by never giving up on my potential and tirelessly searching for a path, I've been helped by many and now lead such a happy life. I want to continue delivering products that make the world a better place as a way to give back. With this resolve in my heart, I smiled at my precious family.